We finally have makeup releases that I actually feel passionately about. So hang in there because this video is going to get interesting. What is this? It's a waste of money, time, space, plastic. But there's something about this palette that is completely off for me. It's definitely giving bland, boring, basic, but I am bland, boring, and basic. And tell me why every person I see this foundation on the shade doesn't match them. I'm just gonna say it. I'm just gonna say it what we're all thinking right now. $42 for two eyeshadows. Is Welcome back to my little corner of the internet. My name is Elle and I might just be your new favorite content creator. In today's video, I'm gonna share with you my hot takes and personal opinions about upcoming new makeup releases. And to make things a little bit more interesting, I wanna get into the holiday spirit and I'm gonna label these products naughty or nice. And as a reminder, take everything I say with a grain of salt. I do want to hear your own hot takes and opinions on each of the products down in the comments below. Just be sure to keep it kind because at the end of the day, we are just talking about makeup. A lot of the photos, videos, and swatches I'm going to be sharing in this video is likely from the Trend Mood 1 page. I highly encourage you to follow them if you want to hear about all of the new makeup releases. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's get into the hottest release of the year. That is definitely some objective, but these are more popular than you think. So Ulta is releasing or has released Ulta mini brands. Mini brands are just a toy company that sells these like balled up blind boxes of literally mini items. Now I'm not gonna lie, when I first saw this release, I thought it was completely stupid. Like I was gonna put this on my naughty list. What the heck, Ulta mini brands, you're literally paying $10 for pieces of plastic. And it's true, okay? I know my audience. I know y'all are also gonna hate on it. Like what is this? It's a waste of money, time, space, plastic. I agree with you. I agree with you. However, I think it's kind of genius of Ulta. And I say this because after the past couple of years with all of the new being about Sephora kids and the younger generation being obsessed with makeup and beauty. I think it's just kind of fitting, especially to release before the holidays. I think Ulta mini brands is perfect for 13 year olds, 14 year olds, any kids that are interested in beauty, but they can't actually have the real product. If you watch Inside Out 2, nostalgia will appear in your mid to late 20s because that is exactly what's happening with me right now. I am reflecting and remembering all of my old favorite toys and re buying them. In the beginning of the year, I repurchased a Nintendo DS Lite and a bunch of the games that I had from when I was a kid. And now I'm currently in the obsession of Bratz dolls because I have always been a Bratz doll girly. Never really a Barbie girly. I love the Barbie movies, but I always collected Bratz dolls for every holiday, birthday, the gift that I would get is a brat stall. And the idea of having little mini Ulta products to put in my brat stall bags or just to pair with my brat stalls completely sold it for me. So yes, I did buy some Ulta mini brands. I will be making a completely separate video opening each one, but I did open one off camera and I kind of wanted to show you what's in it. So you get five different blind bags of products. And in this little container, I got a red mini OPI nail polish, Truly Whipped Body Butter, Good Molecules Brightening Toner, Shea Moisture African Black Soap, and my favorite, the NYX Jumbo Eye Pencil. And ironically, this is not jumbo at all. As silly as this might seem, I think it completely brings me so much joy. I want to collect them. I think this would be an amazing stocking stuffer. Imagine getting a whole stocking full of Ulta mini brands. Natasha Denona is releasing or has released a brand new palette for the holidays called Roxa. It's inspired by the Lila palette, includes 15 shades and a vibrant mix of vivid violets, pastel lavenders, rich fuchsias, and warm pinks with four sparkling foils, one metallic, one wet effect, and eight silky matte shades for $69. Dolores. Now I love purple eyeshadow. It's one of my favorite colorful shadows to wear on my skin tone. I think it is really flattering, but there's something about this palette that is completely off for me. The campaign images do not reflect the actual color story that I see in these pictures. I'm all about pinks and purples, and I don't think she needs to make a monochromatic purple palette for it to be a good palette, but I feel like 
if she did like periwinkle purpley blues mixed in instead of adding the pink it would add a little bit more uniqueness depth to this palette that felt more purple because when you think of purple you think of more like cool tone purples so having pinks in this palette for me completely throws off the appeal of it i also watched morgan turner's recent review of this palette and she said that a lot of the shimmers were kind of lackluster and that's totally fine but if i'm gonna buy shimmers i want it to have a little bit of glitz scattered sparkles in it not just like a metallic boiled color plus i also have a purple palette that i already love i could completely dupe this with the eyeshadows that i own so unfortunately this is gonna go on my naughty list sorry natasha denona but not all hope is lost because i recently did buy her i need a warm palette and spoiler i love that palette worth every single penny the shimmers were shimmering the duochrome was duochroming probably one of my favorite launches of the year so I do not feel like I'm missing out on the Roxa palette at all. And speaking of nostalgia and Bratz, Colourpop actually did a collaboration with Bratz dolls and I was very very excited about this. Again it came at the right phase of my life because I am repurchasing Bratz dolls and when I saw this palette I gasped. I waited for the launch day and I bought it. So here is the Bratz dolls girls night out color pop palette. It has a variety of formulas. You have like this kind of pressed glitter formula but there's something different about it. I think the glitters are more finely milled than their previous pressed glitter formulas. These also don't have asterisks on them. Usually with color pop palettes if they are like pressed glitters and not eye safe they will have an asterisk on them. Them, but for some reason this palette doesn't and I'm guessing that's because these glitters are a little bit smaller than their previous press glitters. The shade names are Passion for Fashion, She's Iconic, Sasha, That Girl, Dump Him, Yasmin, Express Yourself, Girls Night Out, Living It Up, Chloe, Stepping Out, Platform Heels, Two Nights, The Night, Mini Skirt, Jade. I feel like this is very fitting for the Girls Night Out collection. I do not have the Girls Night Out dolls but I definitely will them. I think that the release of the Girls Night Out dolls are so beautifully styled. I'm just waiting for them to go on sale because I don't want to pay full price for Bratz dolls. But this palette is the epitome of like what shades you would want for a Girls Night Out kind of smoky look. I also got the Yasmin Colourpop Lip Duo. It comes with a lippy stick in the shade Pretty Princess and the lippy pencil in the shade Pretty Princess. This is a really unique lip combo. I bought it because I liked how it kind of reminded me of the 90s. This isn't usually the lip combo that I would go for because it's very much cool tone, mauve kind of 90s vibe, but I did go outside of my comfort zone and wore this with a purple eye, and I didn't hate the way that it looked. This was definitely like an early Christmas gift to myself, so I am putting this on my nice list because I am very excited to play around with it a little bit more. Another product that I am actually going to put on my nice list is the Ethereal Baked Face Palette from Ilya. It comes with bronzer, highlighter and blush for 58 US dollars. It is a limited edition all-in-one palette with blurring powders. If you watch my videos, you know I love the Hourglass palettes and this seems like their version of the Hourglass palettes. So I definitely want to buy this. I actually committed to not buying the Hourglass palettes this year just because I felt like the shades were lackluster and not anything unique or different from the Hourglass palettes I currently have from them. And Ilya's face palette if I'm being for real with myself, they're not any different in terms of shade than the Hourglass, but I like that the shades are a little bit more muted and dull than the Hourglass palettes. My problem with their palettes is that I feel like they like really go for like these vibrant blush shades, but I want something a little bit more like beige and less saturated, and I feel like these palettes have that. I also am a huge fan of baked powder formulas. I think that for textured skin, they are very flattering. I think I will be watching a few videos before I commit to buying this but I am saving this for the Sephora sale so stay tuned for my Sephora sale shopping video to find out if I actually end up buying this and just for the sake of your entertainment if I were to roast this it's definitely giving bland boring basic but I am bland boring and basic
Tis the season of eyeshadows because apparently we are back in the eyeshadow era. I've revived my love for eyeshadow again. If you can't tell from my previous videos, I've just been messing around with different eye looks, different shades, and having fun with my makeup instead of just doing a smoky winged liner. And you guys have also been loving it, so I don't know. I'm predicting the eyeshadow era to be coming back. It seems to be emerging once again, especially with all of the launches this holiday season. But I feel like during the holidays, there are always so many products launching so it just makes sense that eyeshadow palettes will be launching in this quarter because it's just the most fun season for makeup. Anyways, Huda Beauty is launching her last palette apparently. It's the Icy Nude eyeshadow palette and she has a bunch of other products launching with it like new shades of the blush filter, faux filter gloss, but I'm not interested in any of that. I could care less. Let's talk about the palette because we are also in our cool tone eyeshadow era, which, you know, not really for me, but I can appreciate the color story. I think what I like about this palette the most is the textures. Huda Beauty kills it with the textures. Just looking at it, my intrusive thoughts are telling me to dip my fingers in the shimmers but also when I see the palette as a whole and the campaign images I find them to be pretty boring. I know the whole concept is icy but for some reason the campaign images are not they're not it for me. I think at a glance it looks like something that I would love however if I look deeper into it it's really kind of lackluster. I just don't find the icy eye looks to be intriguing to me. This is also very much giving Natasha Denona I Need a Nude which I already have but it has some dare I say some warm tone colors in here like the shade cold plunge that looks like a warm tone light beige there's a gold color in here like a gold shimmer and then there's the shade I think it says first class that's like a warm tone so it's not completely cool tone like you would think that but when you look deeper there are a handful of warmer tone shades so if you are fully a cool tone person I have a feeling this isn't what you actually think it's going to be I like that she didn't put any of the weird shimmery shades in this palette that she likes to do I think her shimmer formula is great but when I see this palette it screams ashy so I I'm putting Miss Icy Nude on the naughty list. I will not be buying this, even if it's her last palette she will ever release. Patrick Star has launched his Turn Up The Base a Full Beat foundation and this has already gone viral no surprise they also have their infinity beauty sponge and tell me why i'm more interested in the sponge than i am the foundation one thing i gotta say is i have watched some videos of not some i've watched a lot of videos of this foundation and tell me why every person i see this foundation on the shade doesn't match them. It's either like too yellow or too orange. I know Patrick Star in the past has said that he like fired his previous team. I'm guessing the shade range is a lot more improved, but when you look at the lighter shades, the medium shades, they're screaming yellow and orange to me. And this is just a guess. That is probably because the formula oxidizes. That tends to happen a lot with soft matte foundations. That's a red flag for me. Like seeing everyone having this foundation on, seeing that it just doesn't match them, is a no for me. So this is gonna be on the naughty list. I do really appreciate that he's launching a soft matte foundation. Like I've said in the past, one size is definitely for the oily skin gals and I will always appreciate that. But if there were anything I were to buy to put on the nice list, it would be the sponge because that sponge looks so satisfying to hold on the skin and honestly I didn't think there was any other way you could innovate a sponge but somehow they managed to do it I'm just gonna say it I'm just gonna say it what we're all thinking right now $42 for two eyeshadows it's insane and Patrick Ta I love you I love your makeup I love your artistry I love his content everything but this launch the price we thought the foundation was expensive this this is a whole other level and when i first saw it i wanted it i was like i'm gonna buy this add it to my wish list right now during the sephora sale this is going to hit my cart everything about this looks like everything i wanted and more but i did wonder in the back of my head how much is he gonna charge for this because his prices have been crazy lately and then there were rumors that he was charging 42 dollars for it and i checked myself because i was very curious i went on google i typed patrick ta eyeshadow duos and sometimes when you do that it kind of like pops up the listing even if it's not available on the website and the listing showed 
and everyone's complaining and I agree. Y'all bullied Glossier into bringing back their old formula and I'm not saying I condone bullying, but I think the complaints on this one is valid because something can only be so shimmery, so pretty. I wanted to dive a little bit deeper into the Patrick Ta eyeshadows because I realized there's been a lot more controversy surrounding the pricing since I filmed this. Unfortunately, I couldn't find the size of his eyeshadow duos yet, so I'll just compare the price to other products on the market and note each product sizes that I could find. So we're gonna, of course, just start with his own brand because for $70, you can get the Patrick Ta palette with 12 different eyeshadows, two of which are creams, and each eyeshadow would value around $5. You can also buy two Urban Decay singles, and that would cost you $48 in total, but it would be a better value to get their new Moon Dust palette with four shadows, valuing around $9 each eyeshadow. And then if you bought two Charlotte Tilbury singles, it would cost $68, which is obviously more, or two Hourglass singles would also be $68, which again is more than the Patrick Ta duo. Lastly, for Pat McGrath, you can get their new holiday duo for $25, but this formula is likely not the same as Patrick Ta's. From what I've observed, the Pat McGrath Blitz Astral formula seems the most similar to Patrick Ta's new duos, and you can get that palette for $62, and it comes with four different eyeshadows. Personally, my criticism really isn't towards how the Patrick Ta duos compares to the rest of the market. For me, it's that the price of this duo, even compared to his own brand seems like a bad value. Again, you can buy his eyeshadow palette for $70. It comes with more shades and each eyeshadow is worth like $5.83, right? But even if you compare it to his foundation, two eyeshadows for $42 compared to a foundation for $52. Another brand that has pricing as crazy as Patrick Ta is Charlotte Tilbury and I've always felt this way about Charlotte Tilbury. So this isn't anything new, but because because makeup is becoming so expensive, I think it's worthy of pointing out. Now, I have tried and own most of the shimmer formulas on the market that I've mentioned. I've also had a great experience with Patrick Ta's Matte Major Dimensions 3 palette. It's one of my all-time favorites, and as a makeup lover, I am willing to pay the price if it is appealing enough to me. But I've also been hyper aware of prices, so I will not buy something if it doesn't meet my expectations. If I do swatch this in stores, and they meet my personal quality standards, I would consider purchasing it during the Sephora sale, but I cannot lie, there are definitely similar eyeshadows, especially in Asian beauty, indie brands, and even at Sephora, that offer a much better value, so if that's what you care about, do not buy these duos, but like everything else, it's completely up to you to decide if these are worth it or not. That I cannot put this on the nice list in good conscience. Conscience. Cautious? Conscience? With that being said, I might buy it though. Me sitting here complaining about the price and then deciding to buy it. Patrick Ta, whoever's doing your pricing, tell them to stop it right now. All right, we are not done with eyeshadow palettes. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't make the rules here, but these eyeshadow palettes are the most interesting launches to me at the moment. And this is Makeup by Morrow's Ethereal Eyes in Moonlight, retailing for 68 US dollars. This was another product when I saw the launch, I was like, yes, I'm gonna buy that add to cart favorite, putting it on my nice list. But the longer I stare at it, the closer it moves to the naughty list because I do have the original Ethereal Eyes palette. I like it. Do I love it? Well, yeah, I do. I do really love it. Every time I do makeup looks with it, I find it to be really flattering on the eyes. But is it like the most perfect formula and color story for me? Eh, like... I would describe the shimmer shades almost exactly like the Urban Decay Moon Dust shadows. The glitters are very scattered, and in the OG Ethereal Eyes palette, I found that they all had this transparent kind of base, so you didn't really need all the shimmers in the palette, and I felt them to be kind of repetitive, and that may or may not be the case for this palette. And the only thing that's really intriguing me in this palette, only reason why I would buy it is for the navy blues. Navy blue and just blues in general look really beautiful on brown eyes and that's what's convincing me to buy this palette but if you removed the navy blues it'd be on the naughty list. It would be heck no remove from cart but the navy blue in this palette is really getting to me and then I tried to look through my makeup collection to find a navy blue that maybe I could like play with and replicate this eyeshadow look with and I couldn't find any. So 
<laughs> I don't know. I have mixed feelings. I know that I don't need the other shades in this palette because I already have the OG Ethereal Eyes. I already have the Natasha Denona I Need a Nude palette. And a lot of the campaign images and even influencers creating looks with this palette, I have been very intrigued by. And so I'm leaning towards putting this on my wish list. But then the practical side of me is like, I don't think you need it. So I don't know. We'll see. I'm very torn about this one. There's so many holiday launches that maybe this is one of those products that I'm gonna see in person and then fall in love with or I might see it in person and think yeah really glad I'm not gonna buy that. I'm interested to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Do not tell me if I should or should not buy this because I probably will not listen to you but I do want to hear your opinion. I screeched a little bit when I saw this because YSL just gets me. They do. It's just their packaging but also they do have really great formulas and I know YSL was in a lot of controversy due to their like liquid blushes. Listen I called it out or we called it out before it even launched so we all knew that this was a strange shade range before it went viral on TikTok and it was just completely marketed wrong and people were very confused by it. But we're not here to talk about that, okay? We're here to talk about the YSL Make Me Blush powders. Unlike the liquid blushes, this color store is calling my name and I hope, oh my gosh, I hope that they learn their lesson from the liquid blush launch and that these shades are actually good shades at least based on the pictures i don't have anything bad to say about them like i kind of have like two or three that i want to add to my cart right now i definitely don't need them but i just love the packaging i do like the ysl eyeshadow formula their powder formulas are just very silky soft and blurring on the skin and i would expect their blushes to be the same thing so i am intrigued by this and i am gonna put this on my nice list okay okay i'm done complaining for today i I hope you enjoyed listening to me rant and rave about new makeup releases this holiday season. What do you think? I feel like a lot of these products are kind of controversial, whether it's the price, whether it's the shade range, whether it's the formula. I want to talk. I want to chit chat and yap in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new to my channel. I have an entire playlist of all of my criticizing new makeup releases video. So if you miss any of them, catch up somewhere around here. But as always, I'll catch you on the flip side. Bye!